Hello, welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna kick off the first of our five part series on the genetic and the genes that impact ADHD. So we'll start that off with SLC682. Um, and so we'll, we'll start talking about that gene. I'm gonna give you an idea of what that gene is, obviously, and what medications you need to, this gene would even factor into. Why do we care? I'll probably end every video talking about how to go about getting genetic testing, but we'll see, I don't know. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see, we'll wing it. So SLC6A2. This is one of the genes that codes for our norepinephrine transporter. And if you've never heard of norepinephrine, another name for it is noradrenaline. Adrenaline probably sounds really familiar. And you, whatever you're thinking about when you hear adrenaline, you're right, kind of, maybe. I don't know. I don't know what you're thinking about. Hopefully you're thinking about what I'm thinking about, in which case you are correct. <laughs> um, so norepinephrine is responsible for that flight or fight response. Uh, if a bear jumped out at you, or I don't know, you thought you set something on fire, that feeling that you get of like, oh no, that sinking feeling in your stomach, that's the work of norepinephrine. Um, and so SOC6A2 is important for that process. Now, you're probably thinking like, norepinephrine, I thought we were talking about dopamine. <laughs> and, and, and you're not wrong. So this particular transporter or particular gene also works on dopamine. So you have your norepinephrine and you have your dopamine influences. So what does SLC6A2 even do? As a norepinephrine transporter, its goal is to clear norepinephrine out of the way and stop it from acting. So once you get that burst of, oh my goodness, something bad just happened, I need to respond to it, eventually you calm down, right? You don't just stay Hopefully, otherwise, you know, we have we have other diagnoses for that, but hopefully you come back down to baseline. You can thank SLC6A2 for that um, because it's helping move that norepinephrine or noradrenaline or adrenaline away so that it's not continuing to be available and your body's not continuing to use it. So thanks, SLC6A2. You need a shorter name, but that's okay. <laughs> um, so, so thanks to that. Now, when it comes to ADHD, the main medications that are gonna impact this particular gene is actually methylphenidate, which you probably know it by the brand names Ritalin or Concerta, and even Stratera um, or Atomoxetine. So any of those medications, if you're taking them or consider taking them, or you know someone that's taking them, these are the gene, this is one of the genes that is of importance for that particular medication. Obviously, I was being very scientific about this. I did not want to come in here and like waste y'all's time. So I went out and I found all the research <laughs> related to this gene. Turns out there's 27 different studies specifically looking at how methylphenidate impacts SLC6A2 to treat ADHD. So let's get into it. So you may remember I had a video, it might pop up here, 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 one of those places specifically outlining how dopamine acts on the body. And in that analogy, we have the hallway. So if you haven't watched that video, go watch it because from now on, you're not gonna know what, what I'm talking about. You have the hallway. So you can think of SL6A2 as, in, as a, or the nor, it's an, another name for it is norepinephrine transporter. You can think of it as something that's sitting in that hallway, helping to remove and clear debris that is no longer going to be used by the body, i.e. remove and clear away norepinephrine and, do and or dopamine so that it's no longer floating around in excess and your body doesn't use it up. So that's, that's what it does. Um, the way that methylphenidate and well, it's really, really specifically methylphenidate works is it stops this, this gene, SLC6A2, from working. It says, hey, you're, you're working, I get it, thanks, good job, but actually I need you to take a day off because we actually need all of the dopamine and norepinephrine that you were planning on clearing away. We need you to leave it here so that the body can absorb it and use it. Now, we talked about it last time. Part of the thing that makes ADHD what it is is either reduced levels or dysregulation of the dopamine process. So 
the way that we treat it now through medication is by making sure or prescribing medications that are going to help our bodies keep dopamine floating around so that our body has more time to use it and it can be as effective as possible. So it's not really creating anything new. It's really helping to boost what is already there, if you will. So that's what methylphenolate does. It tells SLC6A2 to chill out. We don't need you right now. We actually need everything that's in this hallway right now. We need it to be absorbed and used in the body. Now, that sounds like a super duper simplified <laughs> explanation of it. Um, but, you know, the, the reason it's so important is because there are studies now hoping to use what we know about this particular gene to make sure that the medications we prescribe for ADHD are as effective as possible, which makes a lot of sense, right? If we, are, if we can control this one transporter and stop it from clearing away the good stuff that we need, then perhaps we can then cure or, you know, ADHD. I don't really think ADHD needs a cure, but whatever. Um, and so that's how it works. The other thing that methylphenidate does that is kind of separate from SLC6A2 is it helps increase potentially. There's been some studies. I don't know. Research is interesting. We never prove ourselves correct in science. There's no such thing. We're always studying, always learning. So there's been some study that is Ritalin or Concerta actually helps increase the enzyme that is responsible for helping our bodies make more dopamine. So if you're taking methylphenidate, um, again, the, the brand names Concerta or Ritalin come to mind. That's kind of how they work. They're going to stop SLC6A2 from moving uh, norepinephrine and dopamine out of the, out of the way and allow, and allow your body to have more time to actually use what's already there. And then as a byproduct, it's also going to help increase the amount of enzyme that you have available so that you create more dopamine. So that's the pathway to create more and not just try to make the most of what we have. The, but the body is incredibly lazy. It doesn't want a whole bunch of extra stuff and it doesn't want it. it the best way the, the body works is through recycling and reusing. So if it's too much of it, it's going to break it down and put it in storage until it needs it again, in which case it's going to bring it back out, put it together and then use it. That's why norepinephrine even needs to be absorbed in the first place. It's your body's way of making sure that whatever is left over gets cleared out and stored for later use. So that's kind of how this particular gene works. Now, there's been some studies showing that the impact of changing SLC6A2 is more powerful in males than females. When I was looking at the research, I wasn't super convinced. So, you know, I, you know, I, I would put a large dose of salt on that. Um, but there, there, that research does exist. So for you, what you really need to know is what your status is in this particular transporter. Obviously, if you happen to have, do genetic testing and find out that your transporter, your SLC6A2 is pretty slow and not really working well, then kudos. <laughs> your methylphenidate is gonna work extra well because you already have a slow or lazy transporter. If you get genetic testing and you find out that you have this like super amped up, super um, <laughs> SLC6A2, then maybe your medication has a bit of a hurdle to overcome in order to be as effective. I highly recommend genetic testing. That's why we're talking about all of this. Um, if you, I mentioned the last time that the human genome, the complete human genome is really a new thing. So if you are not at all curious about genetics, cool, me either. <laughs> me either. <laughs> But as far as it, as it relates to your individual body, I encourage you to empower yourself with the knowledge and get genetic testing so that as we continue to talk about these things, you know your status and we can talk deeper about what they may mean for you specifically. I'm going to look at my notes and make sure I did not say one thing, but um, I am looking, I am looking, I am looking, I am looking. Okay. Okay. Some of this stuff, quite frankly, are things that I need to put in the description because if I were to read them off to you, you'd be like, what? So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to include this stuff in the description so that you can read it. It's honestly not valuable if you don't have 
don't know your status. If you don't know what your genetic status is in this particular gene, it's going to be just like information for the sake of information. So um, that's it. That's the first of our genes. Next week, we'll talk about another of the five genes that are involved in ADHD medications and how those work. But at least at this point, you have one under your belt. So see you next week. Bye.